all matter exists as either a solid or a liquid or a gas. So whether we're talking about atoms or molecules, um, all of these substances are either a solid or a liquid or a gas. We're going to start by drawing some pictures of, let's say, water. Water existing in the solid state, the liquid state, and the gas state. So let's say, first of all, let's make a container. Like this is, let's say this is a, a glass. And we're going to put solid water in this glass, which would be an ice cube. If we were to zoom in and look at the water molecules, which I'm going to represent the water molecules as just spheres to keep it really simple. So a sphere is a water molecule. So we are going to, we're going to put an ice cube inside of this container. And if we were to zoom in and look at it, we would see that ice cube is a collection of water molecules that are just put together in a nice, neat, orderly arrangement. So it might look something like that. Let's say that we took that glass of water and we, or excuse me, that glass of ice and we heated it up. So we still have a glass here. We heated it up until it melted and it became a liquid. Now, when we heat this water up and the molecules become liquids, they lose their orderly pattern. So they might end up looking kind of something like this. I'm not sure if I'm gonna draw the same number of water molecules, but that's not really important. We just have some water molecules running around in here. And notice that there is not a specific pattern, like I'm not drawing them in straight rows, they're just sort of haphazard in there, but they are touching each other, so they're in contact with each other. Now let's say that we heated this liquid water up a little bit more until it became a gas. For water, when it's a gas, as you probably know, we call it steam. And let's, let's put a lid on this container because you guys know gases, they, they will escape their containers if there isn't a lid on them. So as we heat these water molecules up and they enter the gas phase, if we were to zoom in on it and look at it, we would see something that looks kind of like this. So these water molecules are not in contact with each anymore, with each other anymore. There's space in between them. And also, I don't think I'm doing a very good job of this, but they are they are also random inside this container. So they're not in neat, tidy little rows. They're just haphazard again all over the place. So this is what these three different types of uh, matter, solid, liquid, and gas, this is what they look like at the molecular level or at the atomic level. Whether it's water or silver or plastic, uh, whatever the substance might be, this is what matter looks like at these three different uh, at these in these three different states. Let's talk about how the the shape or the arrangement of molecules in these three states affects the way that they appear to us at the macroscopic level, <clears throat> meaning like when we look at solid or when we interact with a solid, um, how does its structure at the molecular level affect the way that we observe it. So first of all, because these solid molecules, they are in constant contact and they are also in some sort of order, so they are in an order, they are not free to move, so they can't change their position. They're basically locked in place. We do know that they're like vibrating in these little positions. They're, they're wiggling, but they're not free to move, meaning that this person up here is not allowed to come down here to the bottom row. So they're stuck where they are. Because they are in constant contact in a very specific order, not free to move, all solid substances have what we refer to as a fixed shape and also a fixed volume. 
So let's talk about the fixed shape part first. Let's imagine that we have an ice cube that is literally a cube. The ice cube is in a cubic shape. And if we're not thinking about melting, like this thing is staying frozen, it's gonna stay a cubic shape. And that is because each one of these molecules are stuck in this specific position and they can't move. They can't rearrange themselves um, and reorder themselves to, to morph into a triangle or a sphere or something like that. So their shape is fixed because the molecules are not free to move. The volume is also um, fixed because these molecules are required to be in constant contact with each other. So they're packed together in this particular arrangement. They're not allowed to spread out, which would allow them to occupy a bigger volume. And because they're in contact with each other, they can't come any closer together, which would allow them to occupy a smaller volume. So they're in a fixed shape and a fixed volume. I have put quotation marks around the fixed shape and fixed volume because we do know at different temperatures, solid substances do expand a little bit or contract a little bit. Um, and so their shape and their volume might change a little bit with temperature. But for the average person and for the average scientist, that slight shift in their shape and volume is not important. If you're gonna become like an engineer, um, building bridges or skyscrapers or airplanes or things like that, then this, this is something that you are going to learn more about in your classes. But like I said, for the average person, we can think about a solid as having a fixed shape and a fixed volume, and that's definitely sufficient. So let's move on to talking about liquids. Inside a liquid at the atomic level, these molecules are in contact with each other, just like with a solid. And because they're in contact with each other, again, we're going to see that they have a fixed volume. They have to stay in contact with each other, meaning that they can't separate, which would allow them to occupy a larger volume. They also can't come any closer together, which would allow them to have a smaller volume. So their volume is fixed. Um, and that's what they have in common with the solid they do not have any sort of order. So there's no order to the arrangement of the molecules that are in a liquid, and they are free to move around as long as they stay in contact with each other. Because these molecules are free to move, the molecules that are on this side of the container could end up over here on this side of the container if they wanted to, and that means that they have a variable shape. Their shape is not fixed. And we know this from experience, we can pour liquid water from one glass to another and it will take the shape of whatever container it's in. So that is one of the things that we say about a liquid, it takes the shape of its container. Now, if we move on to the gases, we see that gases are just totally different from liquids and solids. They are not in contact with each other. And because they are not in contact with each other, they do not have a fixed volume. These gas molecules could come closer together, which would allow them to occupy a smaller space. They could also spread out even further than they already are, which would allow them to occupy a bigger area. And so that means that they have a variable volume. There is no order to the arrangement of the molecules or atoms in a gas, and they are also free to move. And because of this, because they have no order and they're free to move, they also have a very variable shape. And just like with liquids, a gas will take the shape and also the volume of its container.